Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Update on the risk for some severe weather this week, mainly to our west in the Mississippi River Valley, but we're going to have to keep an eye on that system as it weakens and pushes east. Not that I'm expecting a lot of severe weather here, but we could see some thunderstorms late Thursday, depending on the timing of the front. Let me kind of show you what's happening. It's kind of an interesting setup. Here we are in late November. There's really not a lot going on across the country. What you can't see is what's coming into the Pacific Northwest right now. Uh, a big trough of low pressure. I'm going to flip over to the water vapor loop. And if you look carefully, you can see the trough digging in here across the western part of the country. This is going to accelerate. What a trough is, it's a dip in the jet stream and some energy that's going to move down here and move into the southern plains and then into the Mississippi River Valley. At the same time, tomorrow, strong southerly winds are going to bring in warm, humid air, and that's going to supply the fuel for pretty uh, severe thunderstorms. When you see this trough dig in, the, the air aloft is what we call diverts, a diversion uh, aloft like this is that actually lifts the air. So when we see that air get uh, lifted there, that creates the thunderstorms. And when we have so much directional wind shear, which is wind changing direction with height and speed on top of it, that creates all the ingredients you need for severe weather. So tomorrow, pretty potent setup that's gonna occur across the Southern part of the country. So let me quickly turn off the satellite imagery here. We'll turn everything off and kind of show you the setup, which is gonna occur here across the Mid-South. So the area we'll be highlighting on Tuesday is going to be just to our southwest. And you can see this area basically from around western Tennessee, the Memphis area, Greenville, Mississippi, down into northeastern um, parts of Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas. And you see that area highlighted. That's where there could be significant severe weather and likely a few long track tornadoes in that setup. I'll quickly show you the tornado probability here. And you can see it's highlighted in that area. That's a pretty significant <laughs> Um, you know, area that's getting close to the, what we call, you know, 5, 10, 15, uh, you know, 25 to 30% chance of a tornado in that area. And some of these could be long tracks. So that's a pretty significant area of severe weather. Now in the Carolinas, you're watching this going, uh-oh, where's that thing going next? Well, as we go into Wednesday, there will be a low end chance right now. And the main reason is the system is going to be weakening and it's going to lose some of its instability. And I'll get more into this in a minute, but basically what's happening, the system is going to form here, but a lot of the energy is going to lift this direction as the front moves this. So the pieces of energy will be separating as they push east, so we won't have as much of the ingredients in place. But still, there is a low end risk right now for what we call day three, which is going to be Wednesday. I really think this will be more of a wind threat because I expect a skinny line of thunderstorms to be moving in. So. Let's go back and kind of look at the setup here. We'll look at the future cast and kind of show you what's going to happen here as this pushes off towards E. Okay, kind of real fascinating to look at this where there's just nothing on the map today is the ingredients are all coming together tomorrow. So we'll go through today and see it's pretty quiet. Um, I'll kind of look out to the west. You can kind of see hints of that trough coming down, but it's really as we get down here into Texas. And one of the things I always look for early on is you start looking at the humidity level down here. You see these old showers. That's a sign of the low level moisture. Remember, all of this wind shear and energy can't really do anything unless it has fuel. Fuel is low level, warm, humid air. That is what provides the fuel for thunderstorms. You can have all the shear in the world, but if you don't have the instability, sometimes they don't work together. So in this case, we could see that influx of warm, humid air. You even see the little showers popping up early tomorrow morning. We go into the afternoon hours and you can start to see as these things start to develop, the energy starts moving and interacting with that warm, humid air. And you kind of see by tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m., like you got all kinds of little isolated cells. So there will likely be supercells in there, you know, tomorrow afternoon. And these could go into the late night hours. You see some of these storms. Boy, these are the ones you start worrying about right in here in Mississippi, right there into northern Mississippi, even parts of Alabama. So those are all the storms we got to watch tomorrow. And that's where that risk is. And I'll go back and I mean, I'll just highlight. You could see right there. We'll go back. You know, those are the, I mean, you look at those, they even look like supercells on, on, on the, on the model data. So that's pretty significant looking setup there. And I'll show you the STP values, which is the um, tornado parameter. So as we go into the overnight hours, we start losing some of the, some of the heating of the day and the energy starts lifting up into the Ohio Valley. There's still storms there, but they're going to start to become more, you know, co consolidated into like a main line as it pushes to the east. Now this looks pretty ominous going into Wednesday morning. And again, the timing here could be really crucial because if that gets here in the morning, we're probably not going to have the instability. The front itself is back here. You could see that line right there. So this is the actual cold front 
right here, but there could be a whole bunch of clusters. By this time, it becomes just what we call stratiform rain mostly um, in the warm, humid areas down here. But the key, I think, to watching tomorrow is how far north that instability gets. And I'm going to quickly look at that and show you. So one of the things that's really crucial to the setup is the warm, humid air. That's the green air. You see all this dry air, the, the reds and the yellows, and the, that's the really dry air. Let's go through tomorrow and watch this warm, humid air surge up from the Gulf of Mexico um, tomorrow morning. Comes into parts of Texas first. We'll go through time. Look at that big surge of moisture. There you go. I'm going to stop this tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock. Remember, this is the time the severe weather's like, look at that. That air is incredibly, incredibly juicy air. I mean, that some of those dew points here, you can see are in the 70s. So that is really humid air. Now, the air mass back here is really bone dry. Dew points, you know, are in the 20s and 30s. So that's really, really dry air. We go through time, watch as it pushes to the east. The moisture kind of isn't there, kind of falls apart a little bit. So we get into the Carolinas. Look at that. We've got kind of almost a little bit of a wedge set up as we go into the morning hours. So if it's raining in this dry air mass, that is not going to be favorable for severe weather. That's why in the Carolinas, there's less of a concern right now. If we do see this warm, humid air start to surge north, and then we'd have more of an issue. But the fact that the front is here, which you can see, and these dew points aren't favorable for severe weather. In fact, I'll kind of show you the dew points in the 40s and 50s. You can get storms, but that's not the really potent stuff that would cause severe weather to develop. So let's look at that significant tornado parameter. You can see down here across the south, I'm going to back this up. You could see that development there. I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, that's tomorrow evening. You could see that risk for tornadoes down there. Some of the tornado parameters in here are getting up around, you know, um, four, five, six, seven. We go through time and let's just push it east, you know, into early on Wednesday morning. We don't have that parameter. So that's why the severe weather risk for now is really confined to the Mississippi, lower Mississippi River Valley tomorrow. And this could be a significant setup for them. So um, it's late November. These could happen at night as well. If you have friends or family in that area, please tell them to stay weather aware. Um, normally, you don't think about severe weather late November, early December, but last several years, unfortunately, we've had to deal with that. Let me just look real quickly at the updraft helicity. You know, we're looking for where we could have rotational tracks, and I'm going to throw this all the way out 48 hours. And you can see across uh, parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, even into maybe Tennessee, there are a couple areas where there's some long rotational tracks. That's an indication that there could be some long-lived supercells with some rotating updrafts. So the potential is there um, for that part of the country. The good news, I guess, for the Carolinas right now, that threat is low. But I want you to be aware, just in case, I'll be watching it to make sure nothing changes be before Wednesday. But folks in Mississippi, um, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, um, even into western Kentucky and eastern Arkansas, need to be very very weather aware as we go into your tuesday of course i'll have updates throughout the week on social media you, know, you can find me i'll have updates online on air as well as we get closer to the middle of the week stay safe everybody